Good morning. Pastor Sean here on uh, Friday, August 12th, with your morning prayer. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, today we're going to dive into a little bit of uh, 1 Samuel. So 1 Samuel uh, 16, verses 6 through 13. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the, Lord, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shema pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. And Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen these. Then Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, there, yet, there remains yet the youngest, but behold, he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and get him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. And Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David from that day forward. And Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. All right, so we have the, the anointing of David as the, the future king of Israel. Um, and uh, certainly, you know, David is, is well known as, as having a heart for God. Um, you know, great King David, kind of the, the paragon of, of those who would... Uh, chase after God, um, you know, obviously pretty prominent figure since, you know, one of the titles for the Messiah or for Jesus is the son of David. So, you know, David's kind of an important guy, <laughs> if you didn't, didn't realize that. Um, what I focus on, what, I, what comes to mind looking at this text today uh, for, for me is the part where it says, For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. And, of course, in this case, it is supposed to be because David is the least of all the sons. So, um, especially in that culture where the, the, the first son is, is, is the one who inherits everything. He is the, most, he is the prominent one. Um, you know, and so the, the last son, not, not nowhere near that. Um, he is a shepherd. You know, and uh, just kind of a, a lowly profession. And um, so kind of a, a surprise that it, that it would be David. Okay? So, you know, the Lord doesn't, doesn't care what a person looks like or, or anything on the outward. He, he looks into the heart. And the reason why that, that stands out, especially when we're dealing with David, because the Lord looks into David's heart. So, you know, even though, I love how the text says, you know, he, he was ready, but he was, had beautiful eyes and he was handsome. Which is like, uh, who cares? <laughs> Didn't, the Lord doesn't see this. Why, why are we even bothering with this? But, uh, you know, this is kind of the, the human detail and our, our human eye for, you know, the things that we find uh, important or whatever. But, uh, you know, the Lord doesn't care about those things. No, he looks into the heart. He looks into the heart of David and uh, found the one. This is, this is the one that I have chosen. And that's all well and good until you think of, you know, <laughs> the Lord looking into your heart and what is he going to see? And with David, um, you know, certainly he sees sin. Uh, there we, um, you know, bring up Bathsheba, um, you know, and, and how he, uh, David lusts after her, you know, commits adultery in his heart, then commits adultery in real life <laughs> or in, in, in reality, um, plots the death of her husband and then makes it happen. So murder, I mean, horrible. 
and this is uh, he's consumed by his passions and his desire and he's covetous and adulterous murderous um everything god sees that because he doesn't look on, he doesn't he's not concerned with the outward appearance no he cares what's in the heart and in the heart of david is some of the I mean, probably worse sins than you've committed, you know, you, what you would imagine. Now, of course, before God, all sin is the same. But, you know, <laughs> I, I, I would be surprised if, if you, you know, so coveted somebody else's spouse that you uh, um, committed adultery with them and then had their spouse killed. Um, I hope that's not the case. But, you know... <laughs> In, in that regard, you know, David is a lot worse, at least in our eyes, because we look on the outward appearance, right? So what we see is, are the actions of people. So we can look at sin like that and say, oh, that is worse than my own sin, because we look on the outward appearance. God, of course, looks at the heart, but he sees all, he sees all this sin, um, horrible, horrible sin. And yet, this is the one who, whom God has chosen. This is the one that, that God will, um, through whom will bring the Messiah, that God will inspire to write a big chunk of the Psalms. Um, you know, the, 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 some of the most beautiful prayers and, and hymns that we have in, in, in our, uh, um, of, of the faith. And he does amazing things through. And so... You know, reading this today, you know, starting off the day with this one, you know, and, and thinking, well, what does God see when he looks in my heart? And that's terrifying. <laughs> you know, we don't want God to look into the hearts, into our hearts, because we know what he'll find, right? Um, even even just waking up in the morning <laughs> right now, um, I don't want God to look in there. Um, you know, even just the thoughts that I might have had since I've woken up uh, are surely sinful. Um but he looks into the heart and he sees our sin and he still loves us. He still covers us with the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. He still forgives us. He still has mercy on us. Um, and when, when we keep coming back and we, we show that there's nothing we can do about ourselves and, and maybe we try, but it doesn't work, or, or maybe we don't, we're, we're not even trying at all and we're, we've just, you know, we're, we're resigned to this. You know, I, 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 I'm just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a mess, God, and there's no reason for you to, <laughs> you should really be done with me. Uh, God looks into our hearts and says, no, I'm not done. <laughs> I have not given up on you. Um, I've given you my son, Jesus Christ. You are forgiven and you are loved. Um, so uh, that's, that's, that's what jumps out to, uh, to me in this text. And uh, like I said, it's, it's at the same time a terrifying idea for God to look into your heart, um, but also the, a, a great sense of peace and calm knowing that, you know what, I can't hide anything from him and I don't have to. I can, I can say, look, God, this is, this, is, this is everything and there's a lot of it that I'm ashamed of, I, I have regret over, that I f still feel guilty about. There's so much that just, it won't go away, Lord, and I want to be freed from it and there's no sense in hiding it from you because you can see it all. So I'm... I'm just going to lay it all out there. And, uh, and God says, all right. Scoops it all up. Places it on his son on the cross. Says, okay, it's not yours anymore. <laughs> How does that feel? <laughs> um, it feels pretty amazing to, uh, to ha receive that grace every day, every moment. Um, to, to be refreshed in that bap baptismal grace every moment of every day. Um, Wonderful, wonderful stuff. So, I like this one. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope you're able to spend a little bit more time thinking about that this morning. But we'll 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 stop it right there. So let us close in prayer. Let us pray. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself 
my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. All right. Well, thank you for joining me this morning. Um, it's Friday, so have a great Friday. Hope uh, hope everything wraps up well today. Um, maybe you'll even be get, get to start your weekend early. Let's, let's be hopeful. <laughs> have a great day, and uh, we'll, we'll be at it tomorrow. So until then, peace be with you.